And if you're hunting, you know, big old dangerous game in Africa or Australia, maybe 650 to 700 grains is probably smarter. This is a channel dedicated to inspiring you to be the best version or aspire to be the best version, the best hunter, the best dad, the best firefighter captain, just the best dude that you can be. This is Evan Hafer's bow, mm -hmm. uh, the dude who started Black Rifle Coffee Company. And we have a video coming out that I think will break the internet because it is a, yeah. an actual shit show. It's gotta do good. It's gonna do good. It has to. And Jeff did a good job filming of like it happening Everything live. Happening, yeah. So that'll be fun coming soon. You'll wanna watch that video. Levi Morgan's in it, Evan Hafer, Tim Kennedy, Andy Thank Stump, a bunch of other guys, MFJJ fixes it up. It's cool and you'll learn some stuff, which is what the whole point is. So that's coming out. But today's video, we, we should first break this part down. I don't think we've done it before. So at the Elk Immersion Experience, which is right around the corner for registration, details be on the lookout. Mm -hmm. we, we bought five of these stations, including the Baker, so that our guys at the camp, three guys could work on their bows together while you instructed. Right. And this year, we're going to do 45 bow things in a day. 45 athletes, 45 yeah. attendees. Yeah. So we are ordering more of these. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, we should show everybody kind of a little bit of what we do at camp with this stuff. So sure. break it down. I'm going to grab the camera off the tripod, guys. All right. So this is our the workstations that we use at our camps, which I tried to uh, put together what I felt was the most economical but good quality thing. So this isn't the most expensive press that Last Chance makes. It's actually the least expensive press that they make because for the average person, this is more than, more than uh, satisfactory. Sorry. Uh, but you're going to need, if you're going to work on any boat, three different sets of fingers, which is what's all through here. I had my buddy Ryan plaz these out and we'll probably coat the next one so they look nice. But you got fingers for ULAs, you got fingers for standards, and then you got fingers for Matthews, which is what's on here. Uh, that comes in each kit. We have three Allen wrenches, the star bit, the big one, and the black ones around here somewhere. Gen 2 Hamsky level, podium level, which is over there. A couple pairs of scissors, lasers, sharpies, e-clip tools, two different loop pliers, lighters, squares, sharp knife, and the draw board with a scale on it, and a magnet tray for putting your little metal pieces in. Modified for drills so it doesn't take you long to open them and close them. Uh, and we're gonna go from the five that we already have, so we're gonna do 10 more, and those are gonna be for sale during the camp. So if a camper that comes in there wants to buy them, they can. These also are on floor stands with wheels and stuff so you can move them around. It is way more convenient. I neglected ever using one of these for a really long time until I, until I started filming a lot, realizing that right now Dan's standing on the other side of the press from me, and if that's bolted to a camera, a, a counter, you can't see it. It's a bitch to get this angle. But when I did that, I realized how easy it was to just move it over here in my room, move it over there in my room, and just get it out of the way if I wasn't using it with these little wheel kits. So from now on, I'll be using nothing but ro rotary stuff because it was so much more convenient to be able to simply move it. So, and then the Baker Vices, this is the Pro Vice version. It's a lot, e it's a little easier to use for the average lay guy to get your bow level. Then there's a bunch of holes and stuff to put tools in. And then that's our little podium two-way level that we've probably sold a thousand of, shockingly. Um, and once again, on a floor stance, you pick it up, move it out of your way, which is cool. But they do make a model of this that attaches to the press or that you just bolt to the counter. So those are all options in that regard. But that's what we use in our camp. And if you're an attendee, this is what you're gonna touch. Oh, that first day, whole day pretty much. This is kind of like a teaser. Um, the, I got some bulls this year and all my shots were in the 50s. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. Like first one was 54. The second one was 5-0. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it could have been 51 or 52. I didn't, I ranged a tree and then he yeah. went, I don't know where he was exactly, but I hit him right that. in the middle of the body. Yeah. Um, third one was 55 and then the last one was 54 again. Mm -hmm. And I'm hunting obviously open country elk. And so this was a three pin that I picked out yep. that you put on a bow that you guys will see soon enough. And hunting with it on that last elk, I had to, at 54, I had to slide to 54 mm -hmm. because I had it set for 20, 30, 40, which I asked you to do. Mm -hmm. And the other bow has the, I, the landslide. Landslide back on. Now I have a custom, I don't know how, I don't, still don't know how I got it, mm -hmm. but I have a four pin custom landslide. Yeah, that was a favor that I called for. That's you? 
Yeah, I called them and asked them if they'd make it. But Who they, do you call? They did also, they did also, also ask, don't point it out because they won't ever do it for anybody. Okay, so I'm going to point it out. <laughs> Landslide, great site, probably like my top up there. Yeah. Came out with a four pin. That covers 20, 30, 40, 50. Anything past 50, I want to slide to. Yeah. Like, ish. Yeah. They don't make that? Nope. They need to. And <laughs> they said not to do that. I apologize, but you guys helped me put pressure on them. You said, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> You're not sorry. You're nervous. So, anyways, I slid this in and yeah. I need to do first, second, third axis today. We'll do okay. it real quick at the end. So, you guys just a refresher. And that's why we like black gold. And that's why we encourage Black Gold to evolve a few things, which I'll talk about. Actually, I'll have you talk about the end. Sure. Tell them some, they're friends with you. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have a video so in my... you probably video. already said these things to yeah. them. So we'll yeah. do it publicly. But yeah. I'll also give them a lot of praise on their rail adjustment. It's beauty. Their third axis adjustment. It's awesome. And then also, I want you to bring these back to the middle of the housing. Okay. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Okay. So anyways, we're talking about light arrows on stuff. Yeah, what well, was the question of, uh, like, well, I basically Five said grains, advantage. Yeah. They, they asked a very specific question. There were a couple of them that were related to weight. One was, so, is five grains of pounds still a rule? So if I shoot a 70-pound bow, my yeah. arrow needs to be five times 70 in total weight? Yeah, is what the... So, so 350. So the original AMO, or Archery Manufacturers Organization, had a minimum of five grains of arrow weight per one pound of bow weight on your bow, which is why the speed test of... 70 pounds, 350 grains came up. Because uh -huh. that was the minimum that the archery manufacturers organization, mind you, from like 1980, came up with. Okay. And in 1980, what existed? Wood arrows, aluminum arrows, right? Okay. So getting below, getting finding an aluminum arrow that weighs less than 350 grains would have been way underspined for 70 pounds. Yeah. Like drastically underspined, right? So that was kind of a, a simple rule because it kind of pushed a consumer into something that hopefully is at least adequately spined. That's what it existed for. Right, but and that was also probably with a lesser understanding of how aerodynamics work and how tr arrow uh, energy is transferred into an arrow. Mm -hmm. So the stiffness or spine of an arrow is what determines how energy is transferred into an arrow, not its weight. Sure. Right. So because you're looking at an arrow from a standpoint of it, you're firing an arrow, and the front weight, however much you put in here, doesn't move before the back does, and that's why the arrow bends when you fire it. Right. And if this spine isn't adequate, it bends too far, and then the tip starts to dive. Which is why if you shoot a weak spine arrow, a lot of times you get knock highs that won't go away. Because as you're firing the arrow, the front's moving down mm -hmm. before it gets a chance to come out of the bow, pushing into the rest. What if you're so, like Evan Hafer with a 27 and a half inch draw length and you order 250 spines from Ultraview? Uh, is that too stiff? And I've yeah. never really thought that was a thing, but maybe you correct me. Well, too stiff is is uh, is relative, right? So in a, in a 250 spine arrow, which a lot of people will use if they have a decent draw length and a lot of weight, like a lot of people are shooting heavier than 70 pounds anymore. It used to be like 70 was it, yeah. and now you're starting to see a lot of 75s and 80s. Mm -hmm. That's where 250 comes into a little bit more of a play, but it also de depends on how long you cut it and how much tip weight you're putting into it. For most people, a 250 is overspined. Now, if your arrow weighs the same exact weight at 300 versus 250, who cares? Go ahead. But there's only like one arrow on the planet that does that. Every other one, you're going to add a grain to a grain and a half an inch, probably in GPI or grains per inch weight, on a from a 300 to a 250. It's rare to find it where they're not one's a lot heavier than the other. Well, that's going to slow you down. So what are you achieving, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to a 250 because you're trying to add weight then fine but you'd be a lot better served to put more weight in the front of your arrow well you go up in spine because you want to maintain the same stiffness or flex point and as you shoot a stiffer arrow more weight in the front reacts to that and then yeah. it bends the same rate and it's usually for 50 is around 30 to 35 grains somewhere around there is a 50 spine category and i can't get anybody at any arrow manufacturer to acknowledge what that number is i don't know why I just wonder if they don't know, which is but, nuts. But it's somewhere in there. My takeaway on that would be, like, someone like me, I, I'm on the bubble of a lot of manufacturers. I could go to 340, 350 spine, mm -hmm. or I can go down to 300. I'm kind of on that bubble, and I've always just opted to go choose 300 to be safe. Is that good? Yes, 100%. A okay. stiffer arrow is always going to be a little more forgiving than a weaker arrow if you're on the fence of them. 
basically what it boils down to is you can move your rest around a little bit more you can mess with your tip weight a little bit more to stiffer arrow and still get good stability and good grouping if you're too weak of spine your group will open up a lot downrange that's where you'll really see it everything like oh i got it to tune it flew okay my broadhead field point's pretty close yada yada get down to like 60 70 80 yards and all of a sudden blows up the, group, the group's huge that's usually an underspined issue so to answer the question five grains per pound is no longer really no it's spine it's not relevant that, does that it's make not sense relevant at all it's what spine do you need to shoot period so you can shoot under 350 grains through a 70 pound bow that doesn't matter if you're shooting an adequately spined arrow to do it Would so you if you look at a spine that... chart and okay. it tells you to shoot a 300 spine arrow with this much insert weight and this much tip weight and you can find an arrow that weighs less than 350 grains with all those things involved go nuts but the reality of it is that's really hard to do. Like even uh, Rip XV 350 with the glue and point, shooting these for like tack and things like What's that. What's the GPI on that? Uh, GPI so on a 350 is like 6.4 or something like okay. that. These are really, really, really fast and fragile. Very, very fragile. Probably don't want to hunt with this arrow unless it's like, I don't know, a small arrow like an antelope. But <laughs> I'm a small animal like an antelope. But because uh, I actually did shoot this arrow at antelope with. Uh, 35 grain insert and 100 grain tip. Yeah. And I, oddly enough, it still actually worked out to be about 15% FOC with that whole setup. And it was out of an 80 pound bow and under 400 grains. It was about 360 grains. Did zero damage to it. I've done it a Are you getting dozen times. You've done it on a several antelope now. Are you getting pass throughs? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Last year's I got a pass through. Okay. This year I hit hard bone on uh, the back end of it. So didn't. Uh, didn't pass through, but, but it died. Wouldn't, wouldn't have mattered. Oh, <laughs> that wouldn't have mattered of what it's uh, of where I shot. But yeah, like uh, I've shot 80 pounds sub 400 grains on antelope all four years that I hunted them. Killed three antelope, uh, both not this last one, but the previous two full passers, and not super close to me either. Some distance involved there. Yeah. So it, it doesn't mean that it's necessary. Would I shoot it at an elk? No, I would not. Would I shoot it at a deer? Maybe. And Especially you're LDE. I'm, yeah, I've got 30, 30 and a half inches of draw length, folks, so not everybody's gifted like that. But, not fair. so it's, it's velocity and energy, right? So I'm already coming from a place of too much energy, in all fairness, right? So we solved the world's biggest question today. It's not about poundage and GP, uh, GPI. It's, at first, it's spine. Pay attention to your spine. Yes. Then kind of start working that custom arrow build yeah. to what you want. Yeah. You know, what do you want to see? What are you hunting? Yeah. What are the conditions? What are the terrain? Um, like for your antelope hunting where you hunt specifically, the terrain's terrible. Yeah, it's awful. It's a pancake yeah. with yeah. sage this tall. Yeah, you're not getting close. I mean, you can somewhat, but it's, it's very difficult. And the situation's got to be just right. They got to be walking in the right direction. You got to find something that works to it and get in front of them and hope they walk close enough to yeah. get the shot. Is really just like elk okay, hunting this year, in my quiver was different broadheads yeah. based on, okay, I'm in the timber. I'm going to grab this one with the iron wheel wide. Okay, I'm in the wide open. I'm going to yeah. grab my Grim Reaper. They just... One flies better at distance than the other. Yeah. One penetrates a little bit better than the other. It's just mm -hmm. depends on, and in elk hunting, like, am I going solo? Am I gonna call elk into me solo? Am I in timber? Okay, well, they're gonna come in right at me. Right. You know, or am I spotting and stalking elk? You know, it just depends on, yeah. so don't worry about the GPI until you figure out your spine. Yes. And are the, are, are the spine charts, can you trust them? If anything, they're t a titch on the stiff side, but I like that. I'd okay. rather have somebody go a titch on the stiff side. So just abide by the spine chart for what you're building, whether it's Archer's Advantage and their calculator that they have in there, or just the standard Easton spine chart or whatever you want to go off of. But almost all those are always going to be weighted a little bit to the stiff side, so you're not calling the manufacturer saying my arrows don't fly good. Makes That's sense. why. Okay, so. last but not least, we're gonna. Uh, I'm going to switch over to cameraman duties. Josh going to walk you through what Black Gold needs to fix in the future and why we continue to love them after 15 years of running them. Talk to people about the nuance involved with putting, because I have taken this for granted for years, 
-hmm. You doing it, and then when I started doing it myself, I was like, this is kind of hard putting this on just so yeah. perfect. Yeah, so I've actually, I would like to get to where I build these for specific sites, because getting this to where it clamps on it, well, yeah, but that's a cost-effective thing, right? Do it! Um, so, but you got to get it flat on a surface here, and since this has an indent in it, I can drop it in that groove and try to hold it there, and then I just have to jive up here and there, which I knew I wasn't going to have to reset this, because it went from a Matthews to a Matthews. They're perfectly level. So you don't have to adjust your rail at all. But the nice thing about Black Gold is they do have a, f a rail adjustment that's micro-driven, a third access, Show them these third access micro tool. So there's a little screw in there. So you loosen that and drive that screw and it pushes the rail back and forth. Here you loosen the screw on the back side where my forefinger on my left hand is. And you turn that screw and it drives it in or out for very your third little. access. Very, very little. And you can actually sit there at like a 50 yard downhill shot and move it to where it's hitting in the middle of the target. I don't know of another site that actually does that. It's really, it was a very ingenious design. And the way their, their bases interchange is you can put a direct mount, you can put a dovetail, you can put a pick mount all on the same site. You just change it out right where my fingers meet here. There's two screws underneath there. One thing Super I need to ask you, Josh, yes. so what's the name? Is this just a pro site? That's a pro site, yes. I bought the pro site, but it doesn't come with this. Uh, you can order it that way, but no. we don't carry it that way. Nobody carries that way and nobody wants to order. Yeah, so, so when you sell online, this, you buy yeah. this and, and this part. What's that called? Just the that's bridge the bridge lock dovetail. Okay, so yeah. guys, like I'm just clearing that up. They make it in a four inch and a six inch. This is the small one, right? That's the four inch, yeah. And I want as much compression as possible. Yeah, so why would you use a six inch? So when you buy this pro site or mm -hmm. the ascent, the verdict ascent, yeah. is that's called. Yep. Yeah. You know why I put that there, right? I put that so, so where your top yardage. Well, and your top pin is in the middle of the housing. Yeah. So I put your top pin in the middle. You want them all in the middle? Yeah. Okay. All right. Just saying. That so you're saying sense. first the rail, you put first, that on and it, that bubble matched yeah, that that's bubble. That's already set. That bubble matched the other one because I'd already set these for a Matthews. So, so this is your third adjustment here is your bubble here, but they all matched. And we wanted black gold to fix. A couple of things. Two um, things. At least. One, this sucks to try to set. Show them how the, where those so those are. two screws get loosened and then it just slides back and forth and trying to get that perfect and then get it tight. It's sloppy. Is it's it's like a hot dog in a hallway. No one's gonna enjoy that. The other. So and the other is this thread system that moves on here. That everybody strips. Everybody strips it and it if you like compare everyone else's now. Back when they made this, this was the precipice of the best functioning thing I could find. Yeah, that's a big word and I don't know if I used it correctly. Uh, but this system is so hard to beat. But as times evolved, almost everyone's making a system very similar to this, if not the same as this, if not slightly improved from this. And they're all using different gearing through here. And I've, I don't have issues with anybody else's stripping. Theirs does strip periodically. So please, for the love of God, fix that. I would greatly appreciate it, I would most, as would most of your consumers. So, and you haven't changed that in eternity. Get on it. Hi, Kelly. Um, Kelly, I just want to say for the record, <laughs> we love you. And... Mike Ellig, throw that name out there. He retired, dude. Okay, dude invented this thing. Yeah. The something chromatic, what's it called? Photochromatic technology. I am a dude. hunter who hunts a lot of states that do not allow any artificial light attached to your bow. And I'm here to tell you, like if I'm in a dark ground blind and I can't use a light legally, I have to use a black gold. They're the brightest. Hands down sites on the on the market part of that is because the way they wrap their fiber so if you look at this all this is just coiled up in here and then it's gradually coiled through here and then it goes gradually into the site you'll never find a 90 degree bend on a, a black gold site anywhere because 90 degree bends kill the light transmission of the fiber optic. So when you take this thing that's straight and you bend it to a 90, which almost every site does, you lose like half of the light transmission. That's why theirs is brighter. And that's why they came out with photo photochromatic technology because they had a, a problem with their site being too bright for the average person. Like if you're standing out during the daylight, it'll like burn a hole through your eye. It's so freaking bright, naturally with natural fiber optic. Hence the, this turns purple or opaque in direct sunlight. And as that sunlight goes away, it turns back to this whitish clear and allows the light to transmit in low light so you so it's not so bright in direct light but it's still really bright in low light and it, still to this day you walk in the shop and there's 10 different brands of sights on the wall and you look at them and you stop at a black gold and go why is that so much brighter it's because they're paying attention to that because they're bow hunters who are thinking about things that bow hunters would think about
Mm. All right, last but not least, we're just going to move my gang yeah, to I the find, middle. Whenever I find your black round wrench that we had earlier. I'm in this backing off all these screws equally at least two turns. Don't go more than like two and a half or three or you might back all the way out of it. So that's how their micro adjust system works. One screw attaches and the other one locks the pin down. So you got a set screw. You got a set screw and then a pin, a pin lock. And you have to loosen all of them for them to move. But in theory, if you unscrew all of them at the same time and then twist the knob, they'll all move together. So we'll see how I did here. Now they're all moving together. So you can move the entire gang, yep. keep the same distances, mm -hmm. get it in the middle of the housing for my picky. I tried to give you what I thought was better there, big fella. <laughs> That's what happens when you have me build something and you're not around. I'm just guessing what you want. It worked out for me and yeah. you. That looks about right. But mainly for me. Mainly for you. <laughs> there you go. Guys, thanks for watching this quick video we threw together based off of the Instagram Live. Thank you. If you're not, if you're on Instagram, find him, Pony Marcher. I'm over there at Elk Shape. Now, we did talk about the cool setup that we take to all the elk immersions, and I'm borrowing. I rent one. It's here at my house. <laughs> Great for working on your own stuff, honestly. Absolutely. And um, we also discussed spine of arrows, and we kind of chit chat about black gold, which gets overlooked, but is still kind of the OG in the market. Takeaways from today's conversation. Well, spine more than weight is way more important in picking and determining an arrow, number one. All right? Your spine is what matters. The physical weight does not matter. And you want to pick your arrow, overall arrow weight based off of what you're trying to hunt. If you're shooting like you know, antelope and things like that where they're a lot smaller, you can totally get away with a lighter arrow. But if you want one piecemeal thing for everything, 450 is a really hard weight to beat. It just is. The average guy is going to do really well with it. It's going to be the best combination of speed and weight. And if you're hunting, you know, big old dangerous game in Africa or Australia, maybe 650 to 700 grains is probably smarter. Hashtag ranch fairy. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, the OG site. Don't edit that out. Leave that I'm out leaving there. it. I'm <laughs> not <laughs> editing anything. All right. And our, we, we cover our Black Gold Pro site and the couple of improvements that we would like to make. One, this little level system on the sight ring sucks. Can you please make that easier? And two, you need something different in your attachment system for moving your knob because they are prone to strip. If a guy forgets to unlock it and turns it, yeah. Where I really don't see that with other brands. Is Outside mine of that, left it's unlocked? The, yeah, I always leave mine unlocked. Yeah, too. mine's just on yes. left unlock. Yeah, so. but if you go all the way to the top and don't realize you're at the top, you can pull teeth out of it. Guys, smash that sub. We appreciate your support. Smash, smash, smash. And head over to his channel it's Monday. Marcher. Yeah, on Monday. And, and so Tuesday, you're dropping a video on. There will be four brand new bow releases for the Outdoor Group Elite on Tuesday. Check them out. Separation and the preparation. Catch you on the next one. Peace.